Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from HomeSite and this is the third part of my Node Red Masterclass. So this time we're going to be looking at sending notifications to your mobile phone through the Home Assistant app. Let's go! So the first thing I need to apologise. This doesn't cover any Android phones, any Android devices. I don't have any. I don't want to have any. No one in this house has an Android device. We are iPhone fans, unfortunately. So I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to know if this works with Android as well, because I just don't know, and I'm afraid. Um, I may buy a really cheap one and try it um, if I get enough comments saying, please try it on Android, but I know that this works on iPhone. I use it all the time and it works really well. Now, these require, it does require the Home Assistant companion app to be loaded on your phone, and you can download that from the App Store. It uses push notifications, so whether you've got your Home Assistant exposed to the internet, whether you can access it externally or not, it sends signals to your phone, regardless of whether you're on your Wi-Fi or on 3G, 4G, any other network. So it works really, really well. Now we can send a very simple message with some text or we can start to get really cool and send some cameras as well. We can send some pictures, send a snapshot. We could send a live stream as well. Now that does require the live stream to be accessible externally. So let's take a look. So here's the flow that we've created in part one and part two of the Node Red Masterclass. So take a look at those if you want to recreate this. Failing that, you can go to the hamburger menu and import and then copy the text that I'll give you down in the description below or a link to it and you can import this flow as it stands. The critical thing here is that when this PIR triggers we want to send a notification to our mobile phone. So let's send a really really simple one. The first thing we're going to do is drag on a call service node. Yep that's the same one that turns our lights on and off. You can download additional palettes and find a specific notify node. Now these are proprietary ones now we're just going to use this call service node. So if we double click on our call service node, I'm going to say um, test notify domain notify service. This should tell you the devices that have got the mobile app installed. Now here you can see I've got my iPhone 11, so iPhone 11 and my iPad. Now you can do all as well but I'm just going to do Cyphone 11 because that's the one I've got in my hand. We don't need to worry about Entity ID but we do need to put some data. Now this is formatted in JSON. If we click on these three little dots here it'll bring up this sort of bigger screen. Now I'm going to paste in something that I've prepared already which I will put in the description below of course. Now one thing you will find is when you paste it in sometimes you might have to hit this format JSON. So if it comes out in a long line, you might, if you hit that format JSON, now assuming you've got all your commas and all of these little squiggly brackets in the right place, it should lay out like this. So what we're going to send is a, this is a title, that should come up as a title at the top. The message is, and this is a message, and we should get a subtitle in there as well. Now obviously this is just an example of what we can send if we're sending purely text. So if I press done to that, and we drag in a notify, or I've just copied the notify from there. We take that down to there and deploy. Now the theory is, if I press this button here, I should get a message on my phone. It's sending. There you go, that looks good. So you can see that this is a title, you can see this is the subtitle, and where the message comes up as well. So that's pretty cool, right? Now I'm just going to clear that off of my phone, like that. So the first thing we're going to do is change the sound that your phone makes when it receives that push notification, because we don't want it to sound like all the others, and we can actually do some really cool stuff with it. So if we go in the app itself, and we swipe across, we can go down to the app configuration, we can go to notifications, and within there you can see sounds. So in sounds, we can import custom sounds in there. 
Now that'll allow you to pull it through from your iCloud or any other location. We can look in system and this will be all of the ones that are within the normal iPhone. So we can choose this one here. Or, or the clever people at Home Assistant have also done some bundled ones. Now these are pretty cool. We could have your girlfriend. Your girlfriend is arriving. You could have motion, which is pretty cool. We could do this one here, motion detected. Motion has been detected. Or you could even find the Morgan Freeman version of it. So we could say motion has been detected in the wine cellar. Obviously, if you had a wine cellar. We're just going to use this one here. Motion has been the detected. The first thing we do is just use a normal notification. So, how do we do that? In our notif notify node, underneath this data part, now you notice these squiggly brackets here. Now, this data part of this JSON formatted bit of information is where the subtitle comes in. So that has to sit between these squiggly brackets. Now, if we put another enter, another character return or another line underneath the subtitle, we can paste in this bit here again. So we're saying that we're going to push this sound. We're going to use the swish.caf sound. Again, it's between this squiggly bracket. Now, if I click on this squiggly bracket, it shows the start and the end of it. So it shows, and they should always be opened and closed. So if I press that inject node now, we should get that nice swish sound with our message. There we go. Now what if we wanted to get Morgan Freeman telling us that there was motion down the side? That's pretty cool. So we can go into our call service node again, and all we do is change that swish.caf for the full name of the sound that's on that app. That's the easiest way of finding it, I found. Now I'm going to include it in the description below so it's nice and easy for you. And I'm going to press done, done, deploy. And again, we'll send in an inject node. Bit too early. Let's try again. There we go. Motion has been detected. There we go. So now we've got Morgan Freeman telling us when there's motion down the side of the house. So for this next bit, we're going to include a camera. We're going to, I've got a CCTV camera set up. If I click here. Now it's just on my desk for now, just so we can see it. Plus I haven't managed to fit it to the outside of the house yet. Now, what we're going to do next is take a snapshot when motion is detected and send it to my phone. So, let's give that a go. So, if we go into our Notify node, and we can add some extra stuff into this data, into this JSON. Now, before we do that, let's make this a bit more useful. Motion detected. Okay, so we put a more sensible message. We know we've got Morgan Freeman narrating. So what we're going to do before we do that is put another call service node in. I'm going to wire that up to my notification. And within this call service node, we're going to say, call this take snapshot. In our domain, we're going to say camera, our service, we're going to say snapshot. Entity is going to be the name of your camera, uh, cam03. I don't know why it's not coming up in the list, but that's the name of it. Actually, let's just double check. I'm going to come into developer tools, cam03. Yep. 
and in our JSON file, in our JSON bit in this data, click on the three little dots and paste in this code. If we click Format JSON, you see it's taken it from a single line into multiple lines like that. Now we're putting this file in our config file, www, and we're calling it cam3 snapshot.jpg. Now that's really important because we'll refer back to that later. In a second, we'll modify our notify node and we need to refer to this file before we can send it. So let's press done. And done again. Before we do that, I'm going to put in a delay node. I'm going to dump it in here because and I'm only going to delay this for one second. You might get away with less than that, but when we take this snapshot, we need to save it onto our Home Assistant and before we send it. Now, if we try and send it, i.e. this notify goes too quickly after this take snapshot, then it might not send and we might get a blank screen. So, now we're going to modify our notify node. I'm going to come into here and in our data part, we need to make sure that we put the attachment, which is the file we've taken a snapshot, and we need to store it in here somewhere. Now, it's really important to make sure you've got commas in the right place, because JSON is not very forgiving. Notice there's a comma here, because something comes after it, i.e. this message part. There's a comma here, because this data part comes after it. There's a comma here, because the push bit comes after it. And there is no comma after sound or whatever that last thing is. So that's really important. So I'm going to put an enter after this squiggly bracket that closes push. And I'm going to put copy in or paste in this bit of text here. I'm going to put a comma after my sound because I've now got something after it. And I'm going to look at my, this is now my attachment. So I've got an attachment with open squiggly brackets and closing squiggly brackets here. I'm telling it the content type is JPEG and this is the URL to that snapshot. Now notice here we're getting a bad string. We need to put a comma here after this push bit because that is all one thing so we need to make sure that we've got something it knows that there's something coming up after. And that's not it. Now I've fallen into the trap because this is within these squiggly brackets. We don't need a comma after this one. <sighs> Commas, eh? But don't worry, I will put this in a link in the description below so that you can paste it in. Now notice that my, this is the, my IP address of my home assistant. This does need to be externally accessible if you're expecting to re receive the message when you're off the network. I'm going to press done, done. Now I'm going to wire up this timestamp to here, press deploy, and let's test it, see what happens. Looks good. Now if I press on the message, it'll pop up slightly bigger. And there you go, you can see me sat at my desk with this green screen. Cool, right? Now, I was hoping to keep this video really short, and I've got carried away, and I've got about 14 minutes now, but so I'm going to show you one last thing really fast. Now, this is the ability to show a live camera stream on your iPhone as you get the notification. I'm going to take this test notify node and paste it here. I'm going to wire it into this node here and delete this one. So now we've got our inject node wired to our test notify. I'm going to double click in this and go into our JSON. Now, instead of this attachment bit, we're actually going to take all of that out and this comma, because there's nothing after it, but we're going to add something into this push bit. We're going to add in, underneath sound, we're going to put a comma. We're going to put in category. And then after our push closing squiggly bracket, a comma, an enter, and we're going to state the entity ID. Now notice if we format JSON, it stays in line. We haven't got any errors down the side. I'm going to press done, done, deploy. And if I test that one, 
and has been detected. We get our message. Now if I press and hold on this, I get a live stream. Cool, right? So the very last thing that we need to do is to wire it up into the right place because having it in a inject node is not that useful. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to del just move those ones out of the way for now because I might choose, change to use it as a snapshot instead. And I'm going to hook it up to this one here. Now I'm going to deploy that. Unfortunately, this is now the next day and there's no real way of testing it using this inject node because the sun has already risen. So, but I'm confident this will work. I know that, that PIR triggers. I know that the sunset to sunrise logic works. So it'll come out here and it'll send a message to my phone. Last thing to do is just change the name of your notification. I've changed mine to notify Cyphone 11, which is the name of my iPhone. Cool, we're done. So hopefully I've shown you all sorts of different types of iOS notifications, including using a CCTV camera. Now, I've got a different video coming up with about how to set this camera up using RTSP streams or various other different types. So keep an eye out for that one. If you subscribe, you'll make sure you don't miss it. If you've liked this video and you've taken something from it, pr please press like. And thank you very much. I've been Simon from HomeSite. I'll see you next time.